it's also in the reports overnight with Russia's um, moving on that eastern side. Uh, and we will continue to do, as we've said all the way through, to do everything we can to support Ukraine in, in what is a, a, a ferocious battle with a, uh, an invasion Putin is taking for that is becoming more and more abhorrent by the day, if that's possible. What are we going to do about these two British fighters that have been taken hostage? Well, it's dreadful to see um, anybody being taken hostage, obviously British forces, and that's something the government is always very focused on. Uh, the Prime Minister is continually in contact with colleagues and partners around the world, both through NATO and obviously directly with President Zelensky. We'll continue to do everything we can to support uh, anybody uh, from the UK and anybody, actually, uh, as we have done with the Ukrainian people in the work that they're doing to, to defend their country and a, and a democratic country. But how much sympathy should we have for them? I remember um, the Defence Secretary saying at the time that he really didn't appreciate, uh, I, I think it was him or, or, in fact, the Armed Forces Minister saying, you know, people going out there just so they can get selfies to come back. How much sympathy should we have for people that go when they were told they shouldn't? Well, we're very, look, one of the things is very clear is this is a very dangerous situation. The armed forces, both the Ukrainian armed forces and the UK armed forces have their own processes and procedures. People should be following the law. So we should be, we are there to support Ukraine. We are doing that in a very practical way. As Northern Ireland Secretary, I've been very fortunate to see some of the work being done in Northern Ireland, producing the end laws, for example, which are being sent out to Ukraine. That's what we're doing as a country and that's the right way it should be. People who want to support Ukraine, what we would encourage people to do is to do it through the right channels, putting that financial support in, as hundreds of thousands of people no, here in the UK are doing, rather, do than, rather than taking very dangerous and actually not legal processes to go out um, and act in that way. But having said that, obviously we want to see everybody in Ukraine being safe of whatever their nationality, and that's why it's important that Russia and Putin's regime pull out of this invasion. But are we involved in trying to get them back to the UK? Well, look, I appreciate you, you appreciate, I'm not going to comment on what are effectively national security issues. Uh, what we're saying to people is you should not be travelling out to Ukraine. Why is it a national so, well, security because, issue? Because I'm not going to comment on armed forces processes and I'm not going to comment well, on they're not armed forces, are they? Well, we are in a, an armed conflict in Ukraine and it is right that we continue sure to be very are. clear with people. Well, Ukraine is in an armed conflict with Putin. Exactly. I'm sure the president of, of Ukraine would say it is an armed conflict. We are supporting that. We're doing that through the proper but these processes. These guys are very legally, the aren't ways. they? They are. No, they're absolutely they're illegal. But do we still have a responsibility to bring them back home? Well, we always have responsibility for British citizens, which we take seriously. We've got to get the balance right with Ukraine. That's why I say to anybody: do not travel illegally to Ukraine. The armed forces in Ukraine have the support of the UK. We're continuing to put that support in, and that's the right way to do it. And people who want to help in Ukraine, there are ways to do that, both financially no, and I people understand. who open up their homes. That, that is not the way to do I it. I understand. What uh, Russia's saying is if you give us Viktor Medvedchuk, then uh, you can have these two Brits back. Is that something that we would get involved with, that sort of negotiation? Uh, this is an oligarch who, um, as we know, was an opposition leader in Ukraine for a while, MP there, I think, at the moment. Well, we're actually going through the process of sanctioning um, people who are close to the Putin regime. We're not going to be um, looking at how we can help Russia. We're looking to actually ensure that the Putin regime is unsuccessful in this abhorrent invasion. And we'll continue to do everything we can to support the Ukrainian people, and the Ukrainian president and government to defeat Putin. I understand. So these guys are on their own then, really, for now? Well, they shouldn't have been there. It is an illegal act to be there. Obviously, anybody will have sympathy with somebody who has been taken hostage, but we have got to make sure that we follow the proper processes, that we are dealing with this in the right way. We give the support in the right way that the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people can make good use of. That is what those official processes are about. That's what hundreds of thousands of people here in the UK are doing, okay. and, and we should all be very proud of that and grateful for the people of the UK who are okay, doing that. OK, let's talk about the fact that it's a 1,000 days today since Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. There was an opinion poll out yesterday, JL Partners, um, saying the words that were... A bit of water before we go with this one. Uh, things like the, the way they described him was liar. That was the most common word used right in the middle of this bubble here, um, followed by incompetent and untrustworthy. It's not a great look, is it? Buffoon in there as well. Well, look, I work with the Prime Minister on a range of issues across the UK, and obviously particularly for Northern Ireland. And I've been working with someone whose focus has always been on delivering for people. Well, it's been through COVID, um, all the way through COVID. Yeah, but Again, perception's those reality, isn't it? And this is what people think of him. Well, this is why the Prime... Look, I've got to say, the Prime Minister himself has been very clear in the statement he made last week. He's apologised for what's happened. He said he would make changes at Number 10, which he has been making. We've seen some substantial changes there. Five and he's people. focused... Well, but, that, you know, the key people... 55, the chief of staff, though, five people. The, well, he's, been, he's already changed the Chief of Staff and some of the key people around uh, the team in Number 10, which he said he would do. Yeah. Um, he is very much focused on the issues that are affecting people, whether it's around the cost of living, whether it's around continuing the work as we come out of COVID and supporting obviously the people of Ukraine. But he did say that he hadn't broken the rules, but he paid a fine. So 
he must have realised that he'd broke the rules in order to pay the fine, no? Why well, didn't he contest well, it? Well, as he said in his statement last week, the Prime Minister's been it's not very... not because he's a liar, is it? No, no. As he said last week in his statement, and the Prime Minister will be talking to Parliament later he today, will. so he'll make a statement, but at every point he has been clear with what he believes to be the truth. What he's also accepting is the police have looked into this particular issue. They've taken a view that a fine should be issued. He, whether he accepts that, he has paid that fine, um, he's apologised for that. But and does he, he accept that he the broke the rules? The well, he's accepted that the police have said that the rules were broken and therefore no, no, they issued a fine. but does he fine. accept that he broke But that the is rules. very different to... Well, it is very different. That's why I'm asking you to, to clarify he, it. Yeah, but the point he made to Parliament was that when he spoke to Parliament, he was speaking what he believed to be the truth and what he outlined to be the truth. That is absolutely right and proper. But does he but accept that also, he now broke the rules that As he, he said made. last week, he absolutely accepts the police have found that the, the rules were broken to a point that the they issued a fine. Well, it is, because that's why he's paid Not the fine. The and he has outlined that he accepts that. No. Does he accept that he broke the rules? Well, in the sense he's paid a fine that the police have decided it's issued because the rules were broken. But that doesn't mean that anything he said to Parliament was inaccurate at the time. Why not? Because what he said to Parliament, he believed to be true at the time. The On the 1st of December, he said, uh, all guidance was followed completely in number 10. On the 8th of December, he said, no party and no Covid rules were broken. Yeah, and he believed that to be absolutely so true. what did he think was happening when well, there was well, cake and people singing well, happy birthday I've, and drinking beer? Well, what did he think as, it was? As the Prime Minister himself has outlined, and he did in his statement last week, that he was at work all day, he was at work when people then uh, came in and wished him happy birthday, uh, in the same way that Keir Starmer was at work when he was pictured having pizza and beer with his staff. But and the that's Prime something Minister that has, I take up with Labour but, later on, yeah, and, the and Minister, they will be as robustly the, defending their leader as you why, are uh, defending the Prime Minister. But, of course, it's Minister, not just one incident, no, but, is it? But it's but not just one incident. Let me just finish. That's why the Prime Minister was very clear with Parliament. He did not believe at that point that anything he'd done was against the rules. But he absolutely accepts the police have looked at this, they've taken a different view, they've issued a fine, he's apologised, he's paid the fine, and he, and he has been very clear about that. Yet two weeks before, it's uh, suggested in uh, this weekend's papers that he was organising the event for Lee Kane, his head of comms, to leave. So, was that a party or not? Well, I'm, I have to say, we haven't seen that part of the investigation yet. We've got to let the police do their work, okay. get to the bottom so of all of So, let me put it issues. this way, then. I can, only, really, I can all... only comment on what has been decided so far. Yeah, so he's broken the law on, on one occasion, we know at the moment. Can a lawmaker ever be a lawbreaker? Yeah, I think, look, we do see consistently, whether it's through uh, parking fines, whether it's through speeding fines, ministers of both parties over the years... I he's the have Prime been Minister. He permission. was making these well, laws. But we've also... We've, yeah, we've had Prime Ministers in the past have penalty notices, from what I can see, and we've also had Which front ones? bench ministers. Well, I so saw there was a, a parking notice that Tony Blair had once. We've seen front bench so Labour ministers... And, 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 no, and no, 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 you make the point. Gov government so you ministers think as well the, prime, the previous Prime Minister having a parking fine is in any way... Uh, correlated to our Prime Minister making Covid rules when the country was in lockdown. 120-odd thousand people have died. And you can make the comparison between the two? You're saying to me... No, I'm somebody, asking yeah, you yeah, if you no, can. You, you ask me if somebody who sets the laws and the rules can also be somebody who breaks rules. That clearly has happened with a number of ministers over the years. But Tony Blair didn't but make the rules change. on parking. Well, the, the government is responsible for all of the rules and regulations, so you could argue that governments don't pass um, this, some of the specific local fines on parking, but still, if a parking fine is broken, it's still a law of the country. Are you completely so. comfortable making the comparisons with parking fines well, and what I'm the Prime Minister did? I'm just making the point that... No, I'm just asking if yeah, you well, are, in, in all sincerity. That, yeah, absolutely, in the sense that ministers in the past have sadly been subject to getting fixed penalty notices on a range of issues. They can continue to be ministers, they do continue to be ministers. We've seen that in both governments, of the previous Labour government as well as the current Conservative government. The focus has to be on accepting when you've done something wrong, acknowledging that you've done that, which the Prime Minister has, and being focused on moving forward to do things in the right way. And what he has been focused on, and we have to say all through Covid, through this issue with uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the work we're doing on uh, the cost of living at the moment that's making life difficult for so many people across the country, we've got a Prime Minister who's focused on delivering on those things in a way that works for people in this country. And that's why he's had my support and will continue to. But that's why, you know, that's why people think he's a liar, because he says, I didn't break the rules twice. He misled Parliament, some might say. And yet, um, he still doesn't accept that he broke the rules. Well, that's not the case. First of all, he hasn't misled Parliament. He has outlined upon what he believes to be the case and the truth at the point. He has equally, quite rightly, apologised for what has happened, accepted the position the police have taken and paid the fine. And he is very much focused, even on that day, if you look at his diary for that day, I'm focused on the issues that are affecting people across the country on a range of things. As I say, across cost of living, issues with the war in Ukraine, issues as we're moving out and were moving out of COVID and getting our country moving forward in a way that has meant 
we're having the success economically that we're having compared to other countries. If there are any more fines, will they be made public? The Prime Minister has always been very clear that he'll be um, very open about uh, any fines that he, he receives. So if there are any been. more, we will hear about it. So no reason why anything would change. He's always been said he Fine. would be very That's clear and open about that. The First Minister has actually said that to me, today. so thank you for the clarification. And I just wanted to clarify as far as the ministerial code is concerned, because you said he didn't break the rules. Uh, it features a forward by the Prime Minister himself, and it says ministers who knowingly misled Parliament will be expected to offer their resignation to the Prime Minister. You're saying that he didn't knowingly mislead them because on the 1st and the 8th of December, when he said what he said, he didn't realise that when he was in the, the Cabinet room and potentially other places, and there was cake and goodness knows what else, he didn't realise that was breaking the rules at the time. Uh, no, exactly. So he, what's he is, what's he is... happened for him to now <clears throat> realise? What? He still didn't think he'd broken the rules until the police told him. Well, as I said, his view, when he, when he outlined that department, was that he was saying, make, making a statement of fact, what he believed to be true, that is absolutely the right thing to do, that's what you do in, in Parliament. Um, and what he has done since then, as we saw last week with the fine from the police, he's accepted the police have come to view, um, he has paid that fine, he has apologised, um, and he is making changes in Number 10, as he said he would, to so reflect the changes that need to be made. when did he realise that he'd broken the law? Well, as you said, when the police have issued a fine, the Prime Minister has accepted that they've come to that But he sacked people before then. You said that he was clearing out before then in number well, 10. Well, he accepted before then, as we've said, and I think I spoke to you on this programme about this uh, so a few weeks ago. So he did accept before the police. He accepted that things had happened at number 10 that people didn't like, shouldn't so have happened. My question is, when did he realise he'd broken the law? When the police issued him a, a, a fine, he has accepted that But why that, did he sack position. people before then? Because the, that, there's a difference between whether the police decide if there is a fine to issue because the law has been broken is different to whether you realise and take a view that things that happened at number 10 and the way things were happening at number 10 was not right and was not appropriate. He took action on that a, 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 a fair few weeks ago now, a couple of months ago now, as he said he would, uh, and apologised for those issues. He outlined to Parliament that his view was that he hadn't broken any rules. That was the right thing to do. That was his belief at the time. He is also accepting that police have come to a different view on this particular event. They've issued a fine. He accepts that. He's mm. acknowledged that. He's paid the fine and apologised.